Aries, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for November 2018 and November. Seriously, we're almost about to close out 2019. This is an exciting month because there's so much movement going on. One of my favorite things that's happening this month is that not only is Jupiter moving, so moving into Sagittarius, we're going to have our luck and our wisdom and our information and our curiosity challenged and changed and, and moved over a little bit, but the North Node of destiny is shifting out of the energy of Leo and moving into the energy of Cancer. It is gorgeous because my favorite thing you guys about the North Node of Destiny is that wherever it goes, we're going to fulfill a destiny there, right? Wherever it's at, you can look back, track these, right? Grab your ephemeris, look online. When these nodes have been in different signs, look at your chart. What house did you succeed in doing whatever house it is, right? So it's absolutely gorgeous because you will succeed where this North Node of Destiny is at. So the North Node of Destiny moving into Cancer means that the South Node of Destiny is going to be moving into the sign of Capricorn. So now we've definitely got the dichotomy of energies going on and we've been watching that in the world, right? That feminine energy and voice um, versus that masculine energy of voice, the nurturing versus so much structure, being warmer versus some of the cool, right? We're going to see shifts in all of these energies because the North Node's where we're trying to go. The South Node is where we're trying to lead right but they are both necessary so that we see the path to take so very exciting thing going on I'll have a whole video about it don't miss it okay now, like I said, we've got Jupiter moving on this month. We've got Venus coming out of retrograde, which will be helpful to our relationships, to our finances, and to some of our sanity, I think. But on the same day that it comes out of being retrograde, we have also got Mercury moving into retrograde. So we've got a little bit of rethinking to do this month, which is just fine, right? So let's jump in here. Let's talk about this. Let's break this down by date. But before I do that, I've got some extra goodies for you guys. And if you come to my website at stormygrace.com, I've got the blog updated and I have got every single transit I could spot for the month listed out for you on my blog for not only November, but December and heading into 2019. So if you are looking for more details than just the general video scope handles, I have got you covered. You can also click in the description box down below, okay? All right, you guys, so right here at the very beginning of the month, we've got the North Node moving into the sign of Cancer. So Aries, for you, this is gonna be lighting up the fourth house space, fourth house stuff home, family, real estate, property, foundations, things with women in your life, right? The things from the past. Now, looking at it as the North Node, as where we're going, I just have this sense for you, Aries, that first of all, you are working, walking, and living on a different foundation, or you will spend the next year and a half getting it reset, right? You're going to be building something else, but it's not foreign to you, I don't think. I think that the Uranus and Aries shook up your identity enough, Chiron now and Aries, shook up your identity enough that forming a new foundation is not so entirely surprising. However, it will be new. For some of you as well, this is an expansion and a change to your home environment. You could be living in a new home. You could be moving out of a home. You could be, the south node is in Capricorn, which is in your 10th house. You could be moving because of a job or changing a job because of something in your house. That could definitely be the way that that goes. But whatever it is, in about 18 months, you're gonna see that your home zone looks different than it does now. And I love north node energy, you guys, because it usually is very, very positive so on the home front okay also on the sixth excuse me that's happening on the sixth but also on the sixth we've got Uranus taking its retrograde into Aries okay so we're just stepping back he came forward moved into Taurus now he's gonna sneak peek back into Aries into your sign so right there in the first house now this is about it's Honestly, it's kind of neat because you've had so much energy of Uranus here that in this retrograde time, it's actually, I think, asking you to continue to look forward, not necessarily focus on the past. When Uranus is in your sign, your identity, who you at the ushy gushy core of you believe that you are, the things you've believed, the things you stand for, I think they're challenged. I think they get shaken. I think you get out of your comfort zone and see that the world can be bigger or different. So here, I honestly feel like it's saying, all right, man, we've already been here. I've already been in your sign. 
what's different going forward? What do you notice that now you feel comfortable taking forward? Plus, I just told you you're going to spend 18 months changing home, inner security, your foundation, your living situation. None of those things were going to happen, Aries, if you weren't shaken out of the box of who you thought you were into the box of who you can be, right? So absolutely beautiful. Now, one of the things I will tell you that might be good with Uranus stepping back into your sign for a second is if you've still got these bad habits that are hanging around and you're holding on to, it might be a great time for you to look at, let them go. Is it serving you? Is it going to have value? Because remember, as we keep chugging along here and we get back to March of 2019, Uranus is going to be ready to move forward. So some of those things that are holding you back that are your doing, let them go, right? All right, on the 7th, we've got a new moon happening over here in Scorpio. And for the first um, few weeks of the month, every November, uh, the sun is always in Scorpio. So we've got a new moon here. We've got Scorpio energy happening here. We've got Mercury energy, which would have moved on at the end of the month. So... There's a lot happening in this eighth house space. Now, one of the things I think that this is beautiful for, because the new moon is the time that we plant our seeds of intention. This is where we set a new beginning, right? But at this particular new moon, something gives me the sense, Aries, that something with joint resources, of course, which is what the eighth house is about, will definitely be on the table. Whether it's that you're having to pay back debts or you're actively at this point starting to pay back debt or you're getting a new job. I just have this sense of new work, new career, new information for you as we roll into 2019. But this makes me think of joint connections. Um, you're actively involved in them now, paying back debt, taking care of your insurance information, maybe something with a spouse, maybe they're having a new beginning, right? Or maybe you're starting a new job or something like that and the income's being able to change. But there's certainly a joint connection here that I think if you want to plant the seeds of intention to have it be on good foot here to have it be on good terms this is definitely an energy that you can do that with but have no doubt because this new moon is happening in Scorpio it's going to be something very deeply personal to personal to you and it could also bring up a little bit of fear as you begin to take it on I can't I just keep seeing this Aries so it's like you're you're, you're letting go of some piece of just being Aries and melding into a group or into a new life or into a partnership or something like that with a little bit less intrepidation of losing who you are by also joining. So if that's true for you, let me know in the um, comment section down below, okay? All right, on the 8th, we've got Jupiter making its move. It's going to, after 13 months in Scorpio, move on into Sagittarius. Now, what this says for you is, first of all, it's in the ninth house. So, Aries, you may be reconsidering some schooling. You may be reconsidering some traveling, right? Jupiter is very comfortable in Sagittarius. That's the sign he rules. He loves the ninth house. That's the house he rules, right? So, everybody's on good right here. So, school. Is it time to broaden your experience and your understanding and your knowledge? Is it time to travel? Um, is it time to publish, to broadcast, to put something out into the world? Is it time for, it's just a very open-minded time, but your wisdom and your opportunities are brought to the table by this Jupiter information. Now, I will tell you too, for some of you, if you've been in school or you've been in a program or you've been on a track and you just have felt like I'm just kind of shuffling my feet, I don't really know if this is the thing for me, you may decide to leave a program as well if it is not the right one for you. I would tell you before you do that, consult some people, right? Because sometimes we're in the process and we just get stuck, but that doesn't mean we should be giving up. So, you know, do your research a little bit, ask some questions, let people guide you, okay? On the 15th, we've got Mars entering into the sign of Pisces, which let me tell you, Mars in Pisces is not super comfortable here. He's just not, because Mars wants to go, 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 go. He wants to do things. He wants to move. There's assertion and movement and energy. And Pisces is a very watery energy. So he's like sprinting in water. Okay, like best water aerobics ever, but it is not entirely productive energetically for completely moving forward, at least not quickly. Now, Pisces lights up your 12th house space. So I really believe that when your ruling planet is sitting in the 12th house, one of the best uses of energy that you can possibly give yourself because it's not a very active position is to allow yourself some you time. Do you need some you time? Do you need time to breathe in all of these new circumstances, which likely 
have rolled in since October or they're continuing to roll, right? Because here's the thing, sometimes we're not, it's not that we're going through something, we're taking life on life's terms, but we've been taking the same situation for a while and so we're adjusting, but here we go, right? Like now it's time to be like, okay, I get it, I got it, I understand how to do this now, but I also need a deep breath. So this could be a time here for sure, um, that you're just kind of stepping back a little bit. I think it's a wonderful time to work on any spiritual programs you may have. If you have any issues with any variety of addiction or mental situation, I think it's a great time to do a double check-in on that. Make sure you're grounded in what you need and getting ready to launch forward. Because when Mars gets back into your sign, you need to be ready to go, right? Here's the other thing I would um, put out there to you. Mars in Pisces sometimes can be a faring energy. And you may use this however you see fit, but that is something that could definitely be coming to the table. We've had Venus retrograde. That is a very from the past kind of energy. So something like that could definitely be brewing beneath the surface as well, okay? So it'll just depend on who you are, obviously. Now on the 16th, we have got Venus coming out of retrograde. Yes, she's out of retrograde in the sign of Libra. So partnerships. Again, we've got partnerships. We've got this joining energy for you again on the table. Now being out of retrograde here in the sign of Libra, I think what it has done for you is help you see your values, help you see values in relationship, help you see where you stand on some values in relationship. And at this point, with Venus coming out of retrograde and moving forward, you may be a little bit more willing to compromise. You may be a little bit more willing to talk things out. You may be a little bit more willing to have certain relationships in your life, or at least you have some clarity on them. Now, on the exact same day, Mercury is going to go retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius. So here you are, all excited about school and travel and foreign languages and foreign things and people and religion and now you get to really rethink those things right with Mars being retrograde here in the 12th house if you need to rethink your schooling please do it if you need to um, relook at broadcasting editing publishing um, even videos if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel or launching some advertising out there maybe take a time to relook over it now I'll tell you if it's something that you had been working on before you put it down for a very long time Mercury could be bringing you the energy you need to come back to it did you finish school and you're like I need a break this could be the start of your energy that wakes you up gets you filling out those applications and you're moving forward this could be that time oh, I thought I was gonna publish this book but I never went forward with it. This could be the time where you're actually getting amped up and taking action to get these things done. Because think about this. Mars is over here in Pisces in the quiet space now, right? These are also hidden, unfinished projects that we need to get out of transition and complete. Now we've got Mercury in the mental, let's get ourselves out there into the world placement. This could be a helping energy. Celebrate the retrograde. Whatever it is, whatever it's bringing up, it's trying to help you. Now, please do keep in mind as well that Mercury retrograde, we tend to have communication issues, okay? The communication devices, right? You fill out that school application and they're like, oh, you're missing one letter in your own last name and you're like, how do I spell my name wrong? You know, like it could just be some of the funniest things, but it could also be too. You put out for programs, you put out for jobs, you put out for whatever and things are starting to come back. So try and enjoy and celebrate the retrograde instead of being afraid of it. It is not that Mars retrograde business we went through, so it's going to be okay. All right, on the 22nd, we've got the sun entering into Sagittarius. On the 23rd, we've got a full moon happening in Gemini, lighting up your third house space. You've got energy over here in your higher mind. You've got energy over here in the lower mind, in your communication sector, right? So with a full moon, the full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So one of the things I think of with this third house space is that is there a project or a writing or... Um, a conversation or a contract that needs to finish negotiation or something like that that could definitely be on the table. Are you having a conversation from the past? That could definitely be something that's going up. You know, in, in a strange way, just because I think in the beginning of the month we had so much Scorpio energy, you could be hearing back from a debt collector or, you know, even somebody being like, oh, hey, you know, here's a little bit of money right? Wouldn't that be great? Here's some financial aid. Here's some, here's a sponsorship opportunity, right? Because with Jupiter and Sagittarius, you can also go out and find people to invest in you. That's a wonderful use of that energy. All right. On the 24th, we have got Neptune direct in Pisces at home. Very comfortable, very comfortable in this house. Um, so here's the thing. 
Neptune has been retrograde since June, right? Now, as she's out of a retrograde, instead of these things feeling foggy or murky or feeling like maybe you're not super in the reality, I think you get clarity with this energy. I really do. Not to mention, Aries, you've had Uranus step back into your sign. So I think that this gives you a little bit of compassion with yourself as well, a little bit of unconditional love, a little bit of forward creativity. We don't give Neptune, I think, the credit she's due sometimes because when Neptune's retrograde, sometimes we lack the creativity and the energy, right? Because nothing seems really clear. But with Neptune forward, I think you get the opportunity to say, okay, this is the dream, this is the reality, this is the practical action to help it play out. So I think you get a lot of help with that energy for sure. So it's going to be a month, you guys. It is going to be a month. We've got movement upon movement upon movement. But Aries, it is such a nice month for you to go with the flow and enjoy the movement instead of focusing on everything in the past. Even though we've got retrograde energies this month, use the energies moving you forward, right? Because here's the thing. You've done a lot of damn work this year and moving yourself from that life of the past to where you are now, this is like a little congratulations, I think, for you to be like progress, not perfection, but progress has been made and it is good. So I love you guys so much. I hope this gives you beautiful guidance. Please come check out the blog. I've got all of the other transits that I've scoped out for you listed on there. So I hope you take advantage of them. Okay. I love you guys. I'll see you next month.